Hey folks, welcome to the channel. On today's build, we're going to be putting together a little hunting knife made from a Damascus twist pattern. This one is a low layer, about 7 or 8 layers of 1095 and 15N20, but we're going to give it a really tight twist to give it kind of a vertical stripe pattern. Here I'm adding some borax flux right before I do the initial forge weld. That prevents a lot of scale from building up between the layers. Here it's just getting a light press just to set the weld. Now that the weld is set, I can get a little more aggressive with the press. Now I'm going to draw this out into a long square bar and get ready for the twist. One important step to a twist is to break the corners and round it out a little bit. That way when you twist it, you don't get those hard edges. You'll also notice I'm only rounding out the center. Each end I keep square so that I can clamp on my twisting wrench in order to do the twist. Okay, time to twist this sucker. Some people like to put this in a vise. I just find it easier to lock it into the press. Here I am with my modified pipe wrench, giving it a bunch of twists. I always tell people when you're doing a twist, twist it twice as much as you think you need, and then twist it 10 more times. It'll always look better. Time to flatten this out and make our billet. You don't want to make it too thin here because you're going to have to grind off some of those highs and lows just so you don't get cold shuts. That's where the steel folds in on itself. But since we rounded out the bar before we twisted it, we should be fine with cold shuts. Now I'm just taking it to the anvil and getting a little bit of width. And I'm doing that with a hammer just so it's a little easier and I have more control. I started to hammer in the tip here, but then thought I might be distorting the pattern a little bit, so kind of stopped doing that, uh, and then moved over to putting in a little bit of the curve, just so the lines would flow really nicely, and I think I achieved that. This is another piece of Damascus from a previous project. Uh, I wanted to use this for the guard, just so I had some Damascus to flow between the guard and the blade. So I'm just hammering this out to get some length. So there it is after forging. Uh, I decided I wasn't going to forge this one to shape just because I didn't want to distort the lines here too much. So uh, there's the rough pattern I'm going to use. I'm not going to stick to it very strictly. So um, I'll draw it out roughly and then... Uh, Let's grind out the pattern. The weld between my piece of rebar handle and the knife was so seamless that I ended up actually just using part of that rebar as the tang. Uh, and that worked out really well. So it saves me a, a little steel and I can make a longer blade. So 
So here it is after a quick etch. Uh, I've done most of the profile. Um, took it down on the surface grinder so it's nice and flat. I kind of like the profile and the uh, the pattern on this one. It kind of reminds me of this um, mammoth molar that people are using these days. Um, it would be a good look for this knife. Time to do the false edge on the top. If you've seen any of my other videos, I really like to do this by hand with a file. And that's what I use this file jig for. It's time to do the initial bevel preheat treat. Here I'm just marking some lines of how far I want to grind up to. I was thinking while I was editing this that it's time to do another video just on grinding. So I'm not going to give you a ton of detail here, but for those that want more tips on grinding, stay tuned to my Triple T videos for one coming up soon on grinding. Freehand grinding is all about setting that initial bevel angle and then using thumb pressure to move that bevel where you want it. I usually like to do 80% of my bevel grinding pre-heat treat and then just finish it off after heat treat with a higher belt. I also like to add the sharpening choil, which is just a small notch at the end of the blade um, near the plunge line, uh, just to make it easier to sharpen. I like to do this preheat treat as well with a file. It's time to do some normalization cycles on this blade. I'll start at 1600, then do one at 1450, and then 1250. Each one is about 10 minutes soak. After each normalization cycle, I like to pull the blade out and let it hang perfectly vertical in still air until it's cold. If you're curious about the whole process of heat treating a knife, I got a great video on that that I'll link up here in the corner. Let's quench this steel and turn it into a knife. That's a 65 HRC hardness file. It's biting just a tiny bit, uh, and the 60 skates. So this blade is pretty hard. Now I want to do the final bevel grinding. I've got a fresh 120 grit belt just to finish this blade off. So here it is after the final grinding. Um, I'll usually just take this top down with sandpaper. So, um, but a pretty fine edge on it. Yes, yeah, so I'm happy how it turned out.
So here it is after milling the shoulders. And again, you can get pretty close just using a file guide and files. Um, the key is that this piece here and this is straight across. That looks pretty good. Sometimes you need to move it a bit, but that is pretty much perfect. So let's see if I can get this on camera here. There it is. That is pretty much a perfect fit up. There's no space whatsoever. I find for guards in particular, you really want symmetry. Um, you want symmetry on everything, but particularly on guards because people notice that. So that's why I always use layout lines and I always grind to layout lines when I'm doing a guard. I figured on this one I was going to lock it in the vise and use the oxyacetylene torch just to put that curve in it, um, just to make sure I had, I had the curve that I wanted instead of just trying to grind it in. And now I'm just using the small wheel attachment just to put that curve under the guard uh, for the finger. It was a little too hot, had to switch to a glove. You definitely want to make sure you do this while the guard is still square so that it sits on your rest um, perfectly flat. Now I'm just rounding the inside of the guard just to give it a nice smooth texture on your finger. Now I'm putting the scallops in the top of the guard. Uh, I just think those look cool and they give it a nice little feature. So I'm using this little 45 jig and I'm using the two inch wheel just to put that, that scallop in the top. You'll notice I also have markings here to make sure the scallops are in the exact same spot on either side of the guard. Again, you want symmetry.
Now it's time to heat treat the guard. I don't bother normalizing this because I don't care about grain structure, but I do temper it after just to make sure it's not brittle. Time to etch the blade and check out that pattern. Sorry guys, I'm gonna make you wait. Okay, so here's the guard. Um, this has been sanded to 400. Obviously still needs to be etched because this is Damascus. Um, you saw me heat treat it. Uh, it's also been tempered uh, just to make sure we get the exact same color after uh, we etch it. But for now, we're done with that. Now I wanna move on to the handle. So, uh, you guys will see why, um, but I've decided to use zebra wood, really because the blade, I think, looks like zebra <laughs> um, once it's etched. So, um, you'll see in the final reveal. So, I figured I would do um, some zebra wood. This is actually untreated, uh, as in unstabilized zebra wood. So, I'm actually going to do a CA glue handle. So you guys will get to see what that means, and that'll be a first for me. So let's get this block cut down. I want to get the profile drawn on it and um, get moving. I've drawn my profile on here, and I've drawn the tang on. Let's go drill the hole. I find the easiest way to drill holes for hidden tangs is to kind of put it in the drill press vise and put it on an angle so when you drop the drill, it's parallel to your line. And that's what you want. And then you drill it and then move it to do the other side. So I do the two ends of the holes, so to speak, and drill those. And then I go back and drill holes uh, in between those. When I started on this hole, the drill wandered a little bit, and that's really common with these really long, flexible drill bits. So you see me just pressing on the drill bit, and I do that just to kind of recenter it where I want it, and then I continue to drill. So that's a good little trick. Here's another little trick for those of us that don't have big fancy drill presses. Uh, mine only has about three inches of travel, which is never enough to do the full tang hole in the in the in the handle. So I'll mark the um, uh, the drill with how far I need to go with a marker, and then you can just do it by hand. Now I'm just using the height gauge just to square up my block, just to make sure my handle is going to be completely square to the knife. Now that I got this all squared up, um, I've redrawn my profile and my tang. Uh, next thing, I'm going to cut the profile out. Um, when, now that it's nice and square, I know I'm, I'm perfectly square and I can just use the horizontal grinder to take all this off. And then we'll do our pinhole after we do that. Okay, I got the profile all done. Uh, now I can't stress this enough. Never try to change the squareness of your handle until you drill your pinhole. So that's next. We want the pinhole right about there. Um, actually, I might move it about here. So we're gonna drill the pinhole, and to do that, I just go to the drill press, go down until I touch the metal, and then take this off and then drill a slightly bigger hole here just so you've got a little bit of play here and it's not 
because uh, sometimes if you have your pinhole exactly the same size as your pin, when you put it on, it kind of pulls your handle a little away from the guard. So if you want a perfect guard fit up, make that hole a little bigger in the, in the steel. I managed to forget to turn the camera on when I was contouring the handle, but here I am hand sanding it, so you get that. Okay, I've got the handle sanded to 400, and I figured I would do a CA glue handle on this one. So, Starbond sent me some of these things to try out. I told them I would uh, I would try them out. I've actually tried this on, a, on another video uh, and shown this, but I've never done a full handle. So, I figured I would do that one today. Um, so, kind of excited here. So, what I'm going to do is just put, I'm going to use the medium brown, because kind of the brown goes into the into the pores and looks kind of cool. I did this little test piece here. Um, so I'm going to put brown all over it and then I'm going to take some 600 sandpaper and sand it down and then probably do another coat. And that'll give it a nice protective finish because this isn't stabilized wood. So let's give that a shot. Okay, great part about this stuff, um, uh, they sent me the uh, accelerator, which I can't imagine doing this without the accelerator. Uh, I think this is basically just acetone in a spray, but... Yeah, I don't know if you guys are seeing that, but that is already dry. That is incredible. Very cool. I see it bubbled up here a little bit, but that's all right. We're going to sand that down anyway. It even hardened this stuff here. Almost. All right. Let's take some sandpaper to it and um, smooth this out. Well, folks, I got to tell you, I'm really impressed with this product. Um, I, I didn't show it on film, but uh, I sand this with 400 and then I did another coat and then I sanded it with 800 and buffed it. Amazing. I don't know why now people use oil to fill pores. This did it in one coat. Um, so yeah, I'm going to use this on all raw wood products from now on. Um, if you guys want to get some of this, they sent this to me, but if you want to get some, um, look down in the, in the description. There's links to this. Uh, you'll get a discount and uh, the channel will um, will uh, get a little kickback, so uh, you'll help out the channel. Definitely check out the Starbond stuff. It's awesome. All right, we got the blade finished. The guard is finished. Uh, might need one more shot on the buffer. Uh, I've done the pin. Just kind of shined it, domed it over. Because I'm not going to be sanding this after. It's the perfect size here. Last thing, we just need to etch the guard. So let's get that done.